Jonathan Shaw with Entrepreneur Esquire. Uh, car chats number two. I want to talk a little bit about going out on your own, but also being patient first. Um, hold your horses, kid. Okay? There's something to this um, patience thing. The need to be a little bit patient before you jump out on your own. And I know my whole channel and my whole idea here is just to give some tips about what it was like for me to go out on my own. But in this video, I want to talk a little bit about having some patience, learning a thing or two before you do that, because that'll make it infinitely easier for you. Okay, so um, I went out on my own, finally, in the year 2017, um, June 2017 to be exact, and uh, finally hung my own shingle, went out on my own, did my own thing, okay? Now, it would have been infinitely more difficult if I would have done so in, say, October 2011 when I got my law license for the first time in, uh, in Colorado. How could that have been more difficult? Well, the thing that I learned when I first started my very first job as a lawyer, it was in this little teeny town um, called Woodland Park, Colorado, up in the mountains. Um, think South Park, but I literally went to, like, I went to where South Park is kind of based out of that little town was within the area. Like I went to court there, right? But it wasn't there, but little teeny town, mountains, Colorado. And I remember my first day of work um, we needed to file something. It must have been something with the family law court because we were doing a lot of family law. It could have been probate case, something. And I was just like lost. I was just like, I don't know what to do. Paralegal brings me a document to sign. I like put my signature on it and I feel all important, but I'm just like, I have no idea what this is. I got to file this thing. And you know, I had gone to law school. I had a Juris Doctor degree on my wall. I had passed the bar exam. I mean, I jumped through. And then I get there and I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, but the owner of the firm did have an idea what he was doing and the paralegals had an idea what they were doing and then I was just along for the ride to learn for a while. Um, I was there for only about a year and then I switched into an area that I liked a lot more which is immigration law and I stayed there for four and a half, probably closer to five depending, I haven't done the calculations, um, but four and a half to five years working for somebody else that I, you know, and I really enjoyed working for the person. I learned a ton of stuff. Then, having that knowledge base of how to do the area of law that I wanted to do, at that point, I jumped out on my own. Um, it's been hard enough. Like, I'm still going through stuff right now. I'm um, trying to renegotiate a contract for them where I'm renting or look for a new office space, working on my contracts again. Um, I just had to sit, let somebody go from my office, a paralegal, last week, and so I'm trying to recover for that. I've got associate attorneys I'm trying to like uh, help out. I'm always having to make calls on different things, uh, call the shots on different cases, all that stuff. Running the business, right? Right now in particular, I'm in the middle of um, 2020 and, and, and I got this uh, payroll protection program loan and now I'm in the middle of working on getting that paid back or getting that forgiven and so I've got to go into the pay. Like just a million things like you got to do as a business owner. So imagine doing all that stuff and also not knowing a thing about immigration law or how to file something with the court or you know, not having some war stories, some experience in your area of law. One of the things that's really helped me sell myself and be able to bring in a lot of clients and I really want to get into the, the um, advertising aspect of things in future videos, but uh, one of the things that's really helped me is my experience, is like word of mouth, is like my war stories, the fact that I've been able to win some cases and do some things. I mean, literally, the very first asylum case I ever won is one that you're not supposed to win. It's uh, an asylum case from Mexico. This lady came from Mexico, and I can go into that in a different uh, war story video, maybe. But um, not supposed to win that one because it's an asylum case from Mexico. But I was just, I had no idea. I was just a young attorney with a big chip on my shoulder. So I fought for it. I spent hours and hours and hours digging for things, and then I walked in the courtroom and we won, you know? So that background, that having gone through the process and learning the area of law first before going out on my own was the key. Um, along the way, I tried to apply to other places. I, uh, in particular, I have a buddy over in Denver who, uh, now we're, you know, we're, we're good friends. We see each other at events and things and we chat and, and whatever. At the time, I really, really, really wanted to work for the guy. I really wanted to work for him. And he just wouldn't hire me. And it was just, I don't know. And I think that from his point of view, something just didn't feel right. And 
Um, and I was just like, why is this guy like, I speak Spanish. Like I, I, my wife is from Colombia. His wife is from Colombia. I can help him bring in cases. I can go to court. I can do all these things. Right. And so for the longest time, I just really like almost held this grudge against him, like this competition thing that I really wanted since he didn't hire me. I just wanted to show him, you know what I mean? But years later, I had a conversation with him just a couple months ago on the phone talking about hiring associate attorneys. And it came up where sometimes you see somebody that is a number one in, in you know, is a leader, is like a, a business owner. And you make the call not to hire that person because you know that after just a couple of years, they're going to be uh, leaving the firm and maybe taking clients with them, right? So he, like, now I, I hold no grudges. I totally appreciate that he didn't hire me because he saw that in me, right? I knew that about myself too. But here's the thing, again, patience, like hold your horses, you know what I mean? Calm down, grind for a few years and learn because I wouldn't be having the success that I'm having today if I hadn't you know, worked for somebody else for all those years. And so I appreciate that that guy that didn't hire me, but I wasn't able to gain experience from him. He just knew that I was gonna be his competition in the future, right? But I had a really good working relationship with a former boss and we worked together for almost five years and I learned a lot about my area of law. I learned not only the area of law, but how to sit down with a client and have a, a consultation, how to sort of sell my services without being like overly pushy, how to, I don't know, deal with bad clients later on how to deal with the other side, the, the government attorneys, uh, that type of stuff. Learned all those things, so then it became second nature, and I was able to focus my energy and learning and doing new things on opening a law firm. So the message in this video today maybe is a little bit counterintuitive from like whatever this channel's about. This channel's about going out on your own as a lawyer and setting up your business. It's about the business of law, hence the name Entrepreneur Esquire. You're an entrepreneur, and Esquire means you're an attorney, right? You're a licensed attorney. So how do you run a business and be that attorney? But if you're just out of law school, I would say, you know, work for somebody for a few years, be patient uh, and learn your area of law because even if you're not making the money you want to make, and this is the way I see it now, at the time I wasn't making the money I wanted to make. Uh, I was still living like a student. I mean, you had credit card stuff here and there, couldn't buy things for Christmas for the kids and I'm a lawyer, right? So I'm thinking, what am I doing? But the thing is I was investing in my future and now I'm enjoying the returns on that investment. So it's almost like my earnings were in the future and I was leaving them in the future because I was gaining the experience now that I would need to use in the future. So I don't feel like I lost out on money for those few years because I was just investing in learning. So that's the concept, that's the invitation. Uh, put in the time. Another little hack trick that I wasn't able to do, if during law school, you can work for somebody in the area that you want to work in and learn these things while you're in law school, you'll be that much better. But if you haven't done that, maybe don't like hang your shingle week one because nobody's going to hire you. You don't have any experience. Also, you're going to have to be figuring out the business side and the law side all at the same time. Oftentimes that's too much. So even if you know you're a business owner, you're a number one, you're an entrepreneur, you're going to one day, you know, do your own thing, put in the time. One last point on this. You've noticed, maybe some of you who've been watching this, I don't know if it's gonna be years in the future, whatever, that I did not say the phrase, pay your dues. I had somebody tell me one time that I wouldn't be able to go out on my own and set up my own firm, and that I still had to, quote unquote, pay my dues. Okay, I'm paying my dues, every attorney does. You pay your student loans, you pay your bar dues, right? But this thing, this concept that like, no, you have to work for somebody else for 10 years or six years or eight years or whatever it is because that's the way it's done because the older generation of attorneys needs to enrich themselves off of the new attorneys coming out of law school. To me, that's just completely false. So I've avoided that idea. If you're good enough, you should win. Like I do not have the misconception that this younger generation that's in law school right now that's coming up, it doesn't know uh, how to advertise better than I do. I mean, they're growing up in the social media age, okay? So, I don't have this misconception that they need to, quote unquote, pay their dues. Yes, we can mutually benefit from the relationship of me hiring a younger attorney because they need to gain some experience and they eventually want to move into a situation where they're kind of like me and run their own business. That could be mutually beneficial. But the younger generation doesn't owe me anything. And my next generation didn't owe the older generation anything. 
So don't let some uh, boss or attorney or partner in your firm or whatever, like push you down, telling you that you owe them something because you're younger. It's just like a big bully on the playground in, 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 in high school, right? You don't owe them anything, right? If you're like me, when I was in high school, uh, like I was a younger kid, but um, I was on the football team making some noise when I was a, a sophomore. And then as a, as a junior, uh, I got a bunch of rewards for the most improved player. And uh, I had the coach's kid a year ahead of me and the coach's kid the year behind me. Literally only the coaches and their families to this day think that their kids were better than me at quarterback because it's the coaches like obviously they're biased right but like I had everybody in the community clamoring for me to be able to be the starting quarterback on those teams because I was better now there was family influences and it's a small town and I you know my dad got so frustrated he wanted to call and push me like, eh, whatever the point here is like don't let anybody hold you down if you're good enough you should win you don't owe anybody any older generation any dues like that's just a, that's garbage right if you're good enough you should win but to make yourself even better maybe play in the b league for a few years before you get to the a league does that make sense hone your skills in your area of law so that when you open your business you don't you're not stuck learning law and business at the same time you know the area of law and you can focus yourself on business i hope this video has been helpful for you the point is to get some thoughts out there to think about some things um i know it's not going to be the most popular video on youtube but it, that's not the point the point is maybe help one or two people out there or even one day let's say help zero people but i'm not around and my kids or my grandkids are trying to set up their own thing you know they can get some advice so anyways thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next edition of car chats